your application on today's video what I want to do is basically show you how to run a reverse shell in an FTP server or how to check if it's basically the server is misconfigured and basically some other bits and details that I want to tell you that are very very useful if you are getting started in ethical hacking or overall hacking or whatever it is that you're doing offensive security whatever it is that you're doing it is good to know this because this is how you can prevent this stuff easily from happening right so the first thing you want to do is basically make sure that what you're trying to do is basically that you have enough information so the first thing you should do is run a sudo nmap sc which stands for sander scripts which runs basically the computer a scan against the computer for most common vulnerabilities or known vulnerabilities to nmap so with some other script and sv for basically extended details which are very very important because it gives us for example it says us um, it tells us the version that the ftp server is running and it tells us stuff like this as well so what you basically want to do is um Basically, but I have run a, as you can see, I run a scan, right? But against the IP address. Now we're only interested in this because we're only exploiting FTP today. So what we're going to be doing is we're only interested in this. So as you can see, FTP 21, it might be on another port, which is possible as well. As happened to me before, SSH was on a port 2222, and um, which then we need to specify for exploits and stuff like that, that the, the SSH server is running on another port or a service, right? FTP and it tells us the FTP version which is not exploitable begins only exploitable by DDoS if I'm not wrong which is also a bad vulnerability but you know we weren't really interested in DDoS and we we're interested in hacking so as you can see FTP anon and it says anonymous FTP login allowed um, which is bad it should not happen and it tells us there is a directory inside called script and we can NEC writable which is tells us that we can write to the scripts folder and we should check it out. So now what we're going to do is basically log into this file. And um, let me just, sorry, uh, let me just get the IP address because I can't remember the file. So let me just make it bigger. So FTP, paste selection, and now how do you log in? Login is basically anonymous and the password is the same as login, so anonymous. Once you're in, what you can do is ls la to make sure that there's no hidden directories. And as you can see, there's a DFSS D at the start it says that means there's a directory, right? So git cd script and we're in. No, by the way, this is not a directory that you can access, right? It's nothing that you should worry about. So lsla and we're in basically if you do pwd, is it gonna work? Yes, so if you do pwd, which means start for print working directory, remote directory and tells you what directory you're in. We're in directory called scripts. So now, how do you know if you can write to these directories or not? You need to know something called Linux permissions. If you do lsla, which means if, because if you do normal ls, right, I mean for this, but not if you do in Linux, for example, if you do here, if you do ls, it doesn't tell you anything. But if you do lsla, it stands for basically gives you everything, right? It gives you every single, even including hidden directories, right? Um, let me just go back to the FTP. Okay, right. So basically, I'm gonna do a gonna do a full video on permissions. But basically, what happens is these are the permissions, right? Because when I first started the ethical hacking, and I managed to, I think, hack into, or when I was doing exploit, like I was looking around Cali, I was like, "What the fuck is this? Like, like what is this? Like, just some random, like, what what is this? Like, I thought it was like some binary. I was like, what the fuck." And then it's not, it's permissions, right? I found this a couple ages ago, but it, it has been months before. When I found this, I was like, oh, it's permissions. So these are the permissions, right? Um, can I clear the screen? No, okay, right, doesn't matter. So these are the permissions. Now, as you can see, um, basically I'll tell you what this means. So basically there's three types of permissions. Now these are some, there's, um, I can't remember exactly, but each sort of permission has its own number. It's like four, three, and one. If, I, if I'm not wrong, I might be completely wrong, but it goes up to seven, right? So, right, so basically what these permissions mean is that, basically what this means, these letters, right? Because each letter has a meaning. So basically R stands for read, W stands for write, X for means for execute, right? And these are basically three groups. Now, because we're not in the system, we're basically a nobody in the system, we're only interested in these three parts, right? So, 
what we can do is means we, as a nobody in the system, as other, basically everyone, right? Basically, we have permissions to read, write, execute, which means we can download the file, we can write to the file, and we can execute the file, right? So basically, this is a very, very easy thing to do to upload a file and get a reverse shell. So what I'm going to show you right now is how to do this. So the first thing you want to do is get a netcat um, startup. No. There we go. So the first thing you want is to get a netcat or a listener for so listening for connections. So you want to run this um, on port whatever you want. I usually do 444 because that's what I like to do. And now we're going to go to the internet. Actually not, we're not going to because I already want it. So now what we're going to do is find the basically reverse shell file that we uh, script that we want to run. So we need our IP address. Our IP address you can find by ifconfig and looking at ATH0 or TUN0 um, adapters. Right, uh, so port port 444. Um, no, don't want to do that. Actually, I'm not, I don't need this. I don't need this, but I'm going to show you how to get this. Now, reverse operating system. Make sure the operating system you're running this against, it is the one you're running against. You can find this on the map. If I'm not wrong, it should tell me on the map. I don't know if I run the correct flags on. Um, this wasn't supposed to happen, right? Let me just start up again. Um, so if you go to, now it doesn't really tell us, but if you run basically a slash, basically with capital O, it'll give you operating system information and it'll tell us what operating system it is. Not 100% of time, but we can, sometimes we can tell, sometimes we can't, and usually, oh, sorry, it does actually tell you, sorry, it, is, it says right there, Ubuntu Linux, right? Which is obvious, right? Ubuntu Linux, Linux, right? So Ubuntu Linux. Um, so reverse Linux, and I suggest running this bash I, this is the shortest one, it works. So put this on, make sure the IP address is correct, because if it's not, then you're not gonna get a reverse shell the port number and just copy it and put it on basically a file. Now, what I've done is I downloaded this file by running a command called fget. Um, fuck's sake, stop running it in reverse shell, man. I don't want it for a second. Basically, I downloaded this file by running get a clean sh. I edited the file um, by just running mouse pad, right? Let me just open the file, clean sh, and we run it. Okay, now before you do anything, right, uh, when you download the file, right, it is important that you're in the right, the right directory. So we need to do this control D, and as you can see, we're on the, we're not basically in the correct directory, right? So what we need to do is go CD desktop, right, or anywhere you want. I do recommend going to desktop. And you need to remember, right, that you need to be in the right correct directory. I've been making this mistake, some, it's really, it's rarely, but is a rookie mistake, and it's it's a common mistake that you make, right? So what happens is the file needs to be the, the file you're trying to upload needs to be in the same directory. Because what happens is if you download this file, right? For example, you download it twice, and you have it on um, you have it on. For example, if you download it to your basically root folder, it will be right here, and there will be you have a direct on your desktop you will upload the wrong file and you're not going to get a reverse shell and you're going to be annoyed that it's not working. It's just working, but you're not basically uploading the correct file. But so I recommend going in the right directory, right, which is desktop and then operate from there. So now this is where we basically upload the file, right? Once you have basically the reverse shell generated, right? So this is our um, script. Um, now you don't really need this, but I have this to make sure that it works. Um, because I've had more success with this script running inside the file than without it. I don't know how it works exactly, but it, it works with this. It will probably work without this, the bin bash, but I've had higher success with this running. Now, you will basically, this is has a hundred success um, working, obviously, for, for a marshmallow sort of system you're trying to, try to run this against, but you might have to play around with the system a little bit, right? So. What I mean by playing around, right? So, uh, am I logged in? Yes, okay. So basically what we need to do is, let's run the listener. And what you might have to do is 
try and play around with the system a little bit. So try and run some commands right now. The best command that has worked with me for this is basically fget. Right, and then it might not work instantly. I think it's just about maybe the system. Um, yeah, as you can see, we just got, I think the system is working. It is working, definitely working, because I just showed you it works. But it's just a bit slow, right? I think that's the purpose. So why I suggest running is try, try and um, upload the file and then just basically try and um, if get clean as h and basically what this does, it executes this reverse shell. If not, try and run some other commands. For example, if get, um, what is there some other ones? There's some other ones, for example, I can't really see straight away, but just try and try and some commands to download the file or upload the file. Try and, you know, run some commands that will make sure this works. This works every single time. Now, it might not work for you because it matters what system you're trying to, as I said, it matters what version you're trying to run this against. It matters what permissions you are trying to run this against, but it works. Like I said, it definitely works, right? Um, so... Right, so that's basically it, how to basically exploit a FTP system. Now, this may not run on everything, as I said, because it matters what you're trying to run against. It also is about the version. You should always look for the version that's exploitable online, and then that allows you to exploit it, right? So hope you enjoyed the video. If you, if you basically learned something new or you, I don't know, if you enjoy the content, you can also leave a like, subscribe, comment. And I hope you have a very, very good year. I've tried to post something before maybe the new year, but I don't know how well that will work. And hopefully I'll see you in the new year. Hope 2024 will be as great as 2023. And see you in the next video, guys. Thank you for watching.